Hello, everybody. Welcome to Late Night Football. Welcome to our match reaction show. The final one for today. Uh, the final match reaction show for today. It's uh, finished Barcelona nil, Rayo Vallecano nil in the La Liga opening match uh, for these two teams. And uh, it's, a, it's a, yeah, I mean, the, the caption says the missed chances for Barcelona. They really should have won this game. They should have won this game. And uh, they'll be disappointed that they've only come away with the point. Um, and a few tactical things that I think Xavi got wrong in this game that I think ultimately cost them. And we'll go through that. But um, yeah, it's a disappointment, isn't it? But Raya Valdecano were excellent. Excellent throughout this game. I thought they played really well. They, they, they had a game plan. They executed it perfectly throughout this game. And uh, and then, you know, got uh, Sergio Busquets got sent off as well. A bit of frustration, probably a bit of uh, panic. But um, whatever the case is, I, I think, um, you know, Raya Valdecano were full value for the point that they got. Probably should have also got all three. Uh, you know, we'll talk about that in a second, of course. Um, but uh, yeah, talking Barcelona, I was a flat. I, I don't know if it was a sound system on my on my you know uh, the my, on my laptop, but it just felt like there was um, the the atmosphere was a bit flat. It just felt that maybe 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 only to me because of the sound system, as I said. But it just felt a bit flat at least in that first half. It just felt like Barcelona were going through emotions a little bit. They were being pressed very well by uh, Balicano. I think. Uh, I think they beat in this team, didn't they, in preseason. I thought they just, they just came in thinking, ah, you know, this is a job done. Whereas first game, we will be all up for it. This will be a coast. And, and, and I think um, they got taken aback by the tenacity and the, the, the intensity that Raya Valle kind of played with, especially in the first half. I think they've taken back with it. Um, I, I also think playing Dembele on the... Uh, well, I think he played Dembele on the right and uh, Pina on the left. And that's what he did. I think that was a mistake. I think he should have played Dembele on, on the left and Rafinha on the right. Because what the problem was, was that Dembele, of course, could cut inside because he's two-footed. So Dembele can, you know, play either side. Uh, Rafinha, though, was left with, he couldn't cut inside. So he had to keep going and making crosses. And I don't think he liked that. I don't think he liked the fact that he had to keep, you know, on his left foot. Um, so I think if he played on the right, it would have been better because it would just have given them that little bit of, um, uh, you know, opposing wing uh, threat. Which I think they lost because Afina kept, uh, you know, he he couldn't do anything because he, he couldn't cut in. So he had to keep going wide and then putting crosses in, and that wasn't really working. That's not really his game. Uh, you could see the change immediately as soon as Fatih came on because he's right footed playing on the left wing. He could cut inside and he could get make those opportunities and get those chances. So that was one mistake there that I felt uh, that it happened. I mean, to be fair, Barcelona could have had a fair penalty. Uh, they actually they actually could have had two goals if not for offside decisions because the penalty for Afina. It was, it was a stonewall penalty, but it was offside, so you can't give that. And Lewandowski put the ball, ball put the ball back in the net, but again, he was offside. So that was something in the first half that would have been, uh, you know, unfortunate for Barcelona. But, uh, you know, those are the things, those are the things that you need to think about. After Lewandowski was pretty poor today, uh, the number of chances he missed was, was just unbelievable, especially in the second half once the game really opened up. Uh, and he, you know, especially I think in the last, uh, you know, 10 minutes or so, I think he had two or three good chances to score and just couldn't take them. Even it was one point where I think he would have been through and then his, his touch kind of let him down and it just went into into the uh, into the hands of um, Dimitrovsky. Uh, so, you know, you know, it's something there, but Lewandowski has not had the best of pre-seasons either. So he's going to have to get to up to speed quickly because, yeah, you, you don't want to be... Um, you know, without a goal, you don't want to be having uh, average performances for too long. You want to get that first goal out of the way as quickly as possible if you're a striker. So that's something to keep an eye on for Lewandowski, but um, it was pretty average. Um, and that second half, though, I think the substitutions were, were, were good because, as I said, Fatih came on, made a difference with, with him being opposing, you know, with him being playing as, as the right foot left, uh, left finger. And then Fenki Leon come on. I thought that was a good substitution because I think Gavi was a little bit bogged down. The, 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 the thing was, was that Gavi was trying to take the ball off the back four and trying to move forward. He can't do that. I um, mean, he's more for box to box player. Uh, Fenki Leon can do that. He can take the ball as far as he can run. And immediately as he came on, it made a whole difference because he's so different to anybody else. He can run with the ball, he can pass the ball, he can you know find channels to 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 you know uh, get into. So he's very different, and that's and you can see why by Manchester United why Ten Hag likes him so much and why they want him so much. Uh, just because of what he brings to the team is just unbelievable. Now he does need a CDM to play next to him, though. I don't. I don't want to make this a man United scout report, but that was something. But the way he came out, I think he transformed that midfield a little bit, just just by his ability to to run with the ball and to play passes on the run. So I thought that was good to bring him on. It was a good decision. They created a lot of chances, Barcelona. They just kept missing them, kept missing them every time. Fatih had a good chance. Uh, Lewandowski had a good chance. Just kept you know missing them. And um, Dimitrovsky is going to be my man of the match. That, that's, you know, it's pretty simple. Um, the issue was, he was, he was excellent. I thought Raya Valakano, the one issue for them was they had a few chances, which is a touch that was letting them down. Every time they could get into good positions for them, either they would play a heavy pass or they wouldn't be able to control the ball. That was the issue. Like if they could have done more, could have done that a little bit better, 
I think they could have created more chances for themselves and put, put Barca under more pressure. But they just couldn't hold on to the ball long enough or they just couldn't play that pass right enough or whatever. Um, you know, just a little bit let down there. That there's something that will take back. Uh, once the red card happened, I think, you know, Barcelona kind of realized that it's not their day. They're not going to win it. Um, and, and really, uh, Rai Valakano should have won it. They had a chance for Sergio Cameo in, in the 60, uh, so 50, 52nd minute, actually. Um, Cameo, I, the thing is, Cameo did well to get a shot at that because of the, he had to keep going around. But I think the ball should have been released to him much earlier or he should have released the shot much earlier. The fact that he kept trying to find an angle just made it more and more difficult for him to actually get a goal away. So that was something. And it was Zay and Salvi Sanchez should have scored. The second part of a blind of a save was Cis. Cis was the one who should have, who, who really missed his air shot because if he had taken that shot, he would have scored for sure. Uh, when it came out to Salvi Sanchez, I, I thought, you know, it's a difficult angle, but again, he, he should have scored if it wasn't for the Ter Stegen pulling up that blind of a save and then Palkov, which was offside, so it wouldn't have counted. So that was the issue. I also like the refereeing, by the way. I like the fact that, you know, the referees were, were more lenient, but also like very strict with the yellow cards. They were not standing up for like play acting, things like that. They were doing. They're pretty firm. I like that. Uh, apparently, that is going to change the season. It's going to be a lot more... Uh, the refereeing is going to be a lot more different than what it has been before. So, I'm hopeful for that. And it's first game of the season and it's always great and then slowly things tail off. But hopefully, we'll see that. We'll see this refereeing standard continue. But uh, overall, it's two points drop for Barcelona. That's the way to look at it. First game, new camp. You want to win. Um, they didn't. So, if you have to say it's two points drop and they'll have, of course, have to now figure out how they're going to replace Busquets for the next game. Um, and also, yes, one more thing. Araujo playing it right back. I thought that was a problem as well. Um, because he doesn't overlap uh, with um, uh, he doesn't overlap. He's not right back. He's a centre back, and he's playing a right back, so he's never going to overlap uh, with his winger. So that created issues as well because they couldn't stretch that pitch out. But as soon as Sergio Roberto came on again, you could see that the width was there as well on the right hand side. So that was another thing that then Xavi got wrong right at the back. And another problem is because they've got Pistons and Garcia and Araujo, you can only play two centre backs, and he's kind of uh, compromising by playing Araujo as a right back. But I, I do think that, that uh, he's got to place uh, uh, Araujo as a, as a centre-back and he's got to bring in Sergio Roberto or someone else as a right-back. So that's another thing as well that I did notice. I forgot about it, but I remember now. So that's another tactical thing. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Let me know in the comments, what did you think of the game? Did you think Barcelona deserved to win? Do you think um, they could have done more? Uh, so could have done something differently? Let me know in the comments, of course. I always love to hear your thoughts on the game. Smash like for Aya Valacano. Smash like for Dimitrovsky. A man of the match. Um, brilliant performance. Lots of saves. Did really well. Some of them really good as well. So yeah, do smash a like for that. And um, do remember to subscribe to our channel on uh, YouTube, followers on Facebook as well. We've just reached 850 followers on Facebook. Thank you so much, everyone who's uh, followed us. Let's, let's move on to the next milestone now. So we appreciate the support. Let's keep the channel growing. Thank you. know, And uh, I, of course, appreciate that. Uh, and you get notified when videos stop because we've got a few these days. There's a few more games coming up tomorrow as well. So do subscribe and get notified when videos drop. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again soon. Goodbye.